745 is the time. More Americans are tossing and turning over financially fueled nightmares. Nightmares. Dan Ricardo, clinical professor at finance at USD, joins us now to help put your mind at ease. Nightmares, Dan? I just had lucky charms this morning. <laughs> I'm feeling great, by the way. Uh, but it, you're right. There's a lot of families here. We're coming out of the pandemic, mm. a lot of stress, obviously. And a lot of families, are, a lot of consumers saying, we're really worried about a lot of things, and it's keeping us awake at night. And there is mm. a lot of proof that your money, when you stress over money, it actually affects your health right. in a very negative way. So people are losing sleep for one, yeah. or they're waking up with these financial yeah. nightmares. How do we... <laughs> How do we stop this? First of all, it's understandable. We have to recognize that this is normal, right? Think about the stresses over the last couple of years. Now you pile on almost record inflation. Interest right. rates are headed up. It, you know, you need a mortgage to fill your gas tank, right? right? So you can't afford to buy a home in San Diego. There's a lot of things that weigh on consumers' minds, so it is understandable. So the first thing we have to say is this is normal. This is understandable. Mm -hmm. How do we then go about fixing it? The idea is we want to direct our energies toward solutions rather just wallow in the problems. Right, right? because it, it, it kind of feels like we are in survival mode right now yes. a little bit. Yeah, and a lot of it is consumer debt. So what I always tell folks is think about your overall plan, think about your overall budget, but let's focus on something small to start with, a okay. small step. Maybe it's just paying off that smallest credit card you have. Here's why, research tells us that when consumers have a small success, that you know, little step that you can say, oh, I did it, yeah, I, I made yeah. a difference in my life. Guess what? It sets you up for mm. more energy, more positivity for the next step. Rather than, you know, it's taken us years or maybe decades to get into this situation, you're not gonna solve it in the weekend. Right, right. So, but if we take those small steps, that helps us with the next big step. And you bring up a good point, because if you take care of that, sm the, the, yep. the credit card with the least amount of debt, yep. then that's one less thing to look at. Instead of looking at everything as a whole, like I still have to pay all these things exactly off. Exactly right. Okay, uh, financial planning. Yep. It, so when you say paying off the small credit cards one thing at a time, but w talk to me about financial planning. How are we looking at this in the grand scheme of things? So when consumers hear financial plan or budget, they automatically think penalty box, right? Mm. There's this big long spreadsheet I have to do. I'm never going to get to it. Forget it. Let's put it on one piece of paper, something easy. And it just has to be your goals and maybe your overall spending plan. Your budget is how you choose to spend your money. The design here is to put you in control. That's the whole purpose of a budget. So it's nothing to be stressed out about or avoid. It's simply saying to you, and, and if you're in a relationship, your, your partner, how do we choose to spend our money? Mm. How, what's going to put us in control of our money rather than our money controlling us? You know, Dan, I have to say, this is a personal confession of mine. <laughs> when I used to do my budget on, I have this Excel spreadsheet, yeah. and before I got married, my fiance would watch me when I would, I would say, I need a budget, give me an hour. Right. And he's like, you need an hour? Right. And it's just for the month. Yep. And I would get started and he would say, you're breathing so hard. And I didn't even <laughs> notice that I was just like, <sighs> just getting in there. I mean, I, the stress is very much real. And now we're, I would have to say, we are a little worse off now <laughs> than we were two years ago. <laughs> Nothing says I love you like doing, doing your budget together. This is really romantic. But here's the thing, you bring up a good point because studies have shown that when people actually engage each other, mm -hmm. approach it as a team sport, whether it's your partner or a small group of friends or family, people you trust. Yeah. We actually do a better job of managing our money when we share our experiences, our stresses, huh. with people who are close to us. So it's okay to have that discussion with people. We, now, we don't wear it on our sleeve, right? right? But we do want to engage those people that we trust to help us through, especially tough times. Because, and I'm, I'm glad you bring that up, because that this new study yeah. found 56% of people don't believe their finances should yeah. be discussed, because yeah. there's a lot of shame. And this is associated. the no shame zone. Right here at Fox 5, we're all about <laughs> solutions, not shame. We're about lifting people up. So, right. What we don't want to do is broadcast on Instagram our money woes, right? right that's right. Th that's obviously the wrong approach. But it is a great idea to make it a team sport, whether it's with your partner, a people group of people you trust. Share your experiences, things like, hey, how did you tackle your credit card debt? What are uh -huh. you doing about your student loans, right? Are, are you considering a refinancing? What's been your experience? Mm -hmm. Learn from each other. Again, studies show that when we do that, we do a better job. Yeah. And it goes for anything else, right? If you need help, yep. ask for help. Absolutely. Okay. All right, Dan. <sighs> See, deep breath. Exhale. I just did it. Okay. Where's the lucky charms? Yeah. <laughs> Dan, <laughs> thank you so much. I so appreciate you. Thank you Thanks, for giving Christina. us advice, <laughs> Heather. <laughs>